Good morning and welcome online to our worship service today. My name is Pastor Steve and I am one of the pastors here at Hope in Galesburg, Illinois. And it's a privilege that you have joined us online. We truly do live in a unique and crazy time. But we also live in a time of great privilege and opportunity. And we are grateful that we have the tools that we have today to gather online and to worship God. And so we say each time, we are one community, gathered together in different places, in different states, in different countries even sometimes, but one community all gathered together because of what Jesus Christ has done, gathered to glorify God in the power of the Spirit. Welcome online to our worship service today. We encourage you throughout our service today to make use of our chat, to talk in church. Can you believe it? A pastor telling you, talk in church. We encourage that, to chat, to, chat, to talk. In fact, let me give you a question. Lots of us, sounds, there are, some of us have sounds in our life that just kind of give us a warm, fuzzy feeling. There, there are tones that remind us of things. I can uh, sometimes, you know, I, was, I wasn't very old when my grandfather left his dairy farm, but still the sound of cows mooing in the morning somehow caused this kind of warm, fuzzy feeling. Well, later in the service today, I'll talk about another sound that, that is one of my most favorite sounds. I want to encourage you, what are some favorite sounds that you have? Maybe there's a particular instrument that you just, whenever you hear that instrument, you just love that sound. Or maybe it's the sound of bacon frying. Now I've made you all hungry. What are your sounds? Use that in the chat today to share with us today as we enter into our worship service today. As always, we are here to serve you. And so please, in our service, at any time, if there's anything we can do for you, any prayer requests that you might have, please make use of our Connect card. You should see the link appear here shortly if you're here live with us at galesburghope.org slash connect. Go ahead and make use of that Connect card. It's a great way for you to let us know that you're here with us today in any way that we can serve you. Well, as we enter into our worship service today, let us begin this time with prayer and hear our call to worship scripture today. Father God, you are good and your love endures forever. And it's because of your love that we are here today. And it's because of your love and our trust in you and the knowledge of you, that you are good, that you are perfect, that we say today, Lord, speak to our hearts and change our lives. That as we worship you today, as we worship you in the way we live our lives and our jobs and our relationships, may all that we do, all that we say, today and this week, bring you glory and you honor. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Hear these words from Psalm 4. Answer me when I call to you, my righteous God. Give me relief from my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. How long will you people turn my glory into shame? How long will you love delusions and seek false gods? Know that the Lord has set apart his faithful servant for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. Tremble and do not sin. When you are on your bed, search your hearts and be silent. Offer the sacrifices of the righteous and trust in the Lord. Many, Lord, are asking, who will bring us prosperity? Let the light of your face shine on us. Fill my heart with joy when their grain and new wine abound. In peace I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Oh, Lord. 
Would you join me today in praying the Lord's Prayer together? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Lord, as we gather today, we gather as your people. And as we pray that prayer, we remember all of the people down through the ages who have prayed this same prayer and who have sought you, who have trusted you, who have depended upon you and thrust themselves upon you, trusting you for your mercy and for your grace. And Lord, today, even though we live in a society which is, tends to be very insulated from pain and from suffering, Lord, we acknowledge our dependence on you. Lord, we declare our need for you. Lord, we are, are no different than those who have gone before us. Lord, we need you. And so, Lord, we acknowledge today that our, our lives and our well-being do not come from those things that we earn and those things that we gain. They don't come from material things. But Lord, our, our well-being and our thriving come from you. They come from being in you and being found in you, from living our lives in utter trust and dependence on you. And yet, Lord, we know that this way of living is, it goes against the grain. It goes against the, the ways in which we so often try to live life. But Lord, we acknowledge today that you are God. And we acknowledge our dependence on you and our trust in you. Lord, may our lives um, be an illustration, a picture, a demonstration of your love. Lord, not for our sakes, but for your sake. Lord, may we dig down deep into you. May we find our purpose, our meaning, everything we need in you. May we look to you in complete and utter trust and dependence and surrender. In Jesus' name, amen. so mighty there's nothing my god cannot do my god is so big so strong and so mighty there's nothing my god cannot do he made the trees he made the seas he made the elephants too my god is so big so strong and so mighty there's nothing my god cannot do So strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. The mountains are His, the valleys are His, the stars are His handiwork too. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do.
I know this is probably going to sound strange to some of you, but one of my favorite sounds is the sound of a foghorn. There's nothing quite like that low, deep, rumbling bass sound going out across the misty ocean when the fog comes rolling in. One of my places I love to hear the sound of that foghorn is a little tiny fishing village called in Depot Bay, Oregon. And it just has this little tiny inlet in between these rocks that the fishing boats have to navigate. And when the fog comes in, that, that foghorn begins to, to, to do its low rumbling sound. And it does a couple things. One of the things it does is it warns the ships of where the rocks are at, letting them know to be careful, to stay out, to stay away. There are rocks and crash ship. The other thing that low sound does for Depot Bay is that it lets the fishing boats that have got themselves caught out in there in the fog and they become can become disorientated about which direction to go it lets them know where the bay is at where safety is at at that low rumbling sound so they can they can make their way toward the unique sound of the depot bay foghorn and get themselves to safety all of us in our lives need that 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 constant deep tone of the foghorn, that rhythmic tone that brings us back to our place of safety. As Christians, that is Jesus Christ. He is the center and He is our source. And all of us at times in our spiritual lives can find ourselves trapped in a fog. We can be like a ship that's gone out into the ocean and then a fog comes in. Sometimes we find ourselves in a spiritual fog and really it's just happened. It wasn't anything that we did. We didn't do anything wrong. We weren't any place we weren't supposed to be. It just came in and surrounded us and caught us. You know, that in this last year, a lot of us in our spiritual lives have found ourselves kind of adrift in a spiritual fog. We were content. We had the regular routine of gathering together at 10 a.m. for worship. We were looking forward to Easter and spring was beginning to open up and all the anticipation and things. And yet, then this pandemic comes in and this fog kind of surrounded us. We kind of lost our bearings and we, we kind of found ourselves adrift in our spiritual lives. Sometimes we can find ourselves in that fog, you know, sickness comes in, depression and darkness comes on, and we don't know where or why, but yet here we are adrift in our spiritual lives. And we need that low rumbling sound that draws us and brings us back, that warns us where danger is at, but also brings us back to Jesus Christ. Sometimes we find ourselves in a fog in our spiritual lives because we've gone out and we shouldn't have. All the signs on the horizon said there is a storm, do not go, and we went. We engaged and we, we stayed in a conversation a little too long. We stayed on our computer a little too late at night when we should have gone to bed. We had the opportunity to just change a few numbers on a report and make things look a lot better for us and things a lot better for us at work. And we went ahead and we did it. All the signs and pointers are out there. And we let that sin creep into our lives. We found ourselves suddenly looking up and, and here we are adrift, trapped. And we need that low rumbling tone to warn us again where the danger is at and to draw us back to the safety in Christ. Sometimes we find ourselves trapped in a fog actually because everything is going really well. We're like a fishing boat that's gone out to sea and the fishing is good. It is really good. Every line you drop in the water, big fish coming on. You're just reeling in. It is exciting. Life is going so well. Your marriage is good. Your kids are good. You've got a promotion at work. Your bank account looks great. Everything is good and good. You, you might even find yourself at one point thinking, hey, you know what? Things are so good. I don't even have to pray. I, I don't even need God. Life is going so great. And while we're out there and everything is going good and life is good, we don't even see the fog coming in. And we don't even realize the danger we find ourselves until suddenly we look up and it's like, the fishing is going great right here. But I don't know where I'm at anymore. I've lost my bearings. I've lost my connection. And we need that low rumbling sound of the foghorn to draw us back, to warn us where danger is at, and to bring us back to Christ. 
You know, when John writes 1 John, he writes to a church that is his beloved church and his beloved children. He writes to people that he dearly loves. And he writes as an old disciple. It's been 60 or 70 years since Christ was resurrected. And he writes to them as a people that he's realized that many of them have kind of let their lives become adrift and they've let things come in and, and sin has crept into their lives and they've become adrift and in a fog in their life. And he writes them to remind them of that low rumbling foghorn to warn them and to draw them back into Christ. He does that first of all by saying to them, Dear children, continue in him, continue in Christ in 1 John chapter 2 verse 28. So that when Christ appears, we may be confident, unashamed before Him in His coming. Continue in Christ so that you will be confident. Confident in what? Confident in certainty, certainty in your salvation. And you'll be unashamed. Let there be nothing in your life for which you are ashamed of. Let there be no sin remain hidden. Let there be no darkness continuing in your life. Remain in the light of Christ, He says, so that you will have confidence when Christ returns. He says to them, for we know that Jesus is righteous. And you know that everyone who is born of right has been born of Him. Everyone has been born of God. He says, therefore see what great love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God. In, John, in the Gospel of John chapter 3, Jesus speaks to Nicodemus and I, and He says, everyone must not only be born of flesh, born like we all are as, as babies, but also be born of the Spirit, to be born again by Jesus Christ. And those who are born again, those who are born of Christ, are, have been called by God Himself His very children. And that is what we are. See, we are children of God. He says, therefore, live as children of God. Live as recipients of the inheritance of God, not as children of the world. How do we live as children of God? He says, put away sinful deeds and practices. Live lives that are purifying ourselves from all unrighteousness, just as Christ is pure. Jesus is our standard at how to live. Live as Christ lived. Live lives of righteousness and purity, just as Christ lived. He says, in Jesus there is no sin. And no one who lives in Christ keeps on sinning. Those who continue to sin have neither seen Him nor known Jesus. Anyone who sins, who continues to sin, has neither seen or known Jesus. We need that foghorn, that low rumbling sound to draw us back to Christ. John reminds us that as children of God, our identity as the people of God is we are people who are people who, who eradicate sin from our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. And so he says, stop sinning, purify yourselves, confess your sin before God, eradicate the brokenness in our relationship, purify yourselves, live as children of God. Live with sexual purity. Live with relational purity. Live with professional purity. Live with integrity in all things. Why? Because it's who we are as the children of God. It's our, it's, it's how, it's our identifying characteristic. This eradication of sin in our lives. John Wesley would say this, he'd say, Give me 100 preachers who fear nothing but sin and desire nothing but God. I care not a straw whether they are clergymen or laymen, such alone as will shake the gates of hell and set up the kingdom of heaven on earth. Give me 100 people who, care, who fear nothing but sin and desire nothing but God. This is what John is writing about. This is what it means to be a child of God, that we live every day in fear of sin and desiring nothing but God, living each day, eradicating sin from our lives, not letting it have a foothold in our lives, living each day in purity in everything that we do. We do so because we are children of God. You know, doing so doesn't mean that people in the world, everybody's gonna look around us. Sometimes, you know, we hope that you know, if we live this way, people will see us and they'll be drawn to Christ. And that's great when that happens. 
But John reminds us the reason we live this way is not specifically so that people will come to Christ. We live this way because we are children of God, because it is our identifying characteristic as children of God that we live this way. And in fact, living this way may cause people to reject you. It may cause persecution. It may put your life in risk. It's great that someone will choose to do business with you because they see you as a person of integrity. Others may see your commitment to purity in every area of your life, your fear of sin, your eradication of sin in your life, and they may see it and be driven away because of it, and they may reject you because of it. And that is okay, John says. Listen to this, what says, if we love, let the love of God, if we let the love of God make us into children of God, then we really should expect that many people today will have trouble understanding our values and our strange sense of identity. In a culture of individualism, we belong to a community, the body of Christ. In an age that seeks security through violence, we seek solidarity and forgiveness and peace. In a society that finds personal identity through social networking, we find our true name in baptism and in following Christ. We are odd and we smooth over our oddities at our peril. When we feel right at home here, we should wonder whether we have traded the joy of divine love for the comfort of social acceptance. When we feel at home here, we should wonder if we have traded the joy of divine love for the comfort of social acceptance. We can all find ourselves in a spiritual fog. And what we need is that low rumbling sound, that continuous tone that draws us back to Christ and draws us back to safety. It's why we engage and participate in spiritual practices in our life. They are those constant tone that brings us back. Whether we have found ourselves in a fog because we don't even know how we got there, or whether because of our own actions or even because life is going great, wherever we are at in our lives, we participate in these practices of confession of study of scripture, of gathering together as the community and worshiping together, because they are for us that foghorn that reminds us and alerts us to where the rocks and the danger is at. And they show us and they point us the way back to Christ, to our safety and to our home. What are those practices that we engage in? I, I wish I had time to go deeply into all of these, but let me share these with you. Richard Foster, in his book, Celebration of Discipline, he lays out these disciplines, these spiritual practices that we do. And he's broken them up into three categories of inward practices, outward practices, and corporate practices. Then these things are things that we do. They are the foghorn in our lives. They are that constant rhythmic tone that brings us back to Christ. Inward practices are practices of prayer and meditation, of fasting and study of scripture. These inward practices of taking time to ponder the voice of God, to study scripture, to read a passage of scripture and to mull it over, to read it over and over again. There are many passages here in 1 John that maybe even would grab onto you that you might say to yourself, what does that mean? To each day to ponder and to wonder what that would look like in our lives. For example, in verse 3, chapter 6, No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him. Have you ever thought about just taking that verse and pondering over and over and over again? This is what it means to meditate on Scripture. The outward practices of simplicity, of solitude, of pulling all those, that ebb and flow of pulling ourselves away from all the stuff in life, of solitude, of submission, of service. They help us prepare to make the world a better place. And then he says the corporate practices of confession, confessing our sin, of worship and guidance and celebration. And they bring us one another, nearer to one another and to God. These practices, these inward, outward and corporate practices in our life, the study of scripture, practices of submission and service and confession and worship, these are why we participate in these things in our life is they are that low foghorn that constantly is out there. And when that fog comes in in our lives, whether it's there because everything is going great or because we've gone where we shouldn't have gone or we just found ourselves trapped, 
we participate in them regularly, rhythmically, like that steady tone of the foghorn. And they alert us and they warn us to sin in our lives, the rocks, the places we might be crushed against. And they give us the focus and the drive, the alert back to be in Christ. As we ponder this passage from 1 John today, I want to ask you a question. I want to give you a question to ponder, and it's this. What if we, as children of God, were more concerned about sin in our own life than our rights or our being accepted by others? What would it be like? What if we, as children of God, were more concerned about sin in our own life than our rights or being accepted of others? How would we be different? How would the church be different? For you and I have been declared the beloved children of God. Therefore, live as children of God. Live with those regular practices, the reading of scripture, the gathering and corporate worship, the confession of sin, of service, submission, life of simplicity, of solitude, of fasting and prayer and study. Live with these practices because they are for us that steady tone that alerts us to the rocks and they point us and give us a focus on Christ in every area of our life. Let me give you that question to ponder one more time. What if we as children of God were more concerned about sin in our own life than about our rights or our being accepted by others? Let's pray together. Father God, examine us. See if there be any wicked ways in among us. Purge us from our sin. And may we live lives of purity and righteousness before you. So that on the day that you return and your final victory is established upon this earth, we may stand before you in confidence without shame, for we know that by your blood you have forgiven us of our sin and you have empowered us to live lives of holiness and righteousness. Alert us today, Lord, to, to practices that maybe we need to bring back into our life. Those tones, those steady rhythmic practices, whether life is going bad or life is going great, we still participate in them because they point us to you and they help us to eradicate in the sin in our lives. Father God, open our eyes to see you, to see who we are before you, and by your spirit empower us to live as your children in this world today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you again for joining us online for our worship service today. As we have shared in our service today, some of the, the practices and the rituals that function for us really as kind of a foghorn, that low rumbling sound that alerts us to danger and draws us back to Christ in our lives. I want to give you a challenge, perhaps, if you're kind of looking at yourself and not knowing where to start. Pick up your Bibles and turn to 1 John. It's toward the back of the Bible. Or if you need to, use the index in the front. That's fine. I use it sometimes to myself. And read through 1 John this week. It's five chapters. Read through 1 John. If you, if you need to, just read one chapter a day or even sit down and read through it over again. Read through the whole book in one sitting and do it multiple times. And lead, read through in that regular practice and let it be for you like that foghorn drawing you back to Christ. Listen for the tones and the voice of Christ speaking to you, warning you of anything in your life, but also drawing you back to Him. And so as we go this day as the people of God, I encourage you to go with feet ready to follow Jesus wherever He may lead, whether that is across the street or around the world. Go with hands open and willing to love, to serve, for you are the hands of Christ in this world. Go out of a heart that has been sanctified and made pure by the work of the Spirit in your life. Go with, a, with ears open to hearing God and eyes ready to see where He is at work and where He may be calling you. And a mouth that is ready, willing to declare the good news of Jesus Christ to all that you meet. Go this day as children of God. You are sent. Joy, my righteousness in
Through Christ in me.